And we are glad to say that we are here gathered in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you can, just turn to somebody near you and say, I'm glad to be here in Jesus' name. Now, some of us have really overcome. Some of us have been challenged and shaken to our core. Some of us have been healed and raised up for this time. And I say that the grace of God is upon each and every one of you that has joined us tonight in this building and has joined us live in social media. Jesus is king over the Virginia 4th jurisdiction. Amen. And if you would just give a round of applause to Jesus Christ, our Savior and our King. Well, this jurisdiction is presided over by our prelate, Bishop G. Wesley Hardy, and I'm your expediter for tonight, Elder G. Wesley Hardy, Jr. And we're so glad to have each and every one of you. So if you would now, we're going to begin our program. We're going to ask that for our opening prayer that we would have Elder Gregory McDowell, our jurisdictional president of Evangelism Department, to come and lead us in prayer right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. Gracious God, our Father, is now and again that we come before your throne. And as we come before you on this evening, Father, we just want to take this time to say thank you. Thank you because you are God. We recognize that there is no one greater than the God of our salvation. We thank you for this opportunity and for this privilege that you have afforded us once again to gather in this house, to gather all throughout social media, and to come together to worship and adore your holy and matchless name. We pray now, Father, that as we come, that you would be in everything that's going to be done and said in this place tonight. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, just to breathe on us one more time. Forgive us of our sins of omission and our sins of commission. We thank you right now for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And tonight, God, we ask you, you have kept us down through the years. You've kept us safe. You've kept our minds stayed on you. We've been through a lot, but we're still here. And for that reason, we come to give you glory. We come to give you praise. We come to let you know we appreciate you. You've kept us. You've kept us. And we're thankful for it on tonight. Now be in the midst of this service tonight. Let your spirit go throughout the airways. And come move in the midst of your people. Wherever they may be, whatever they may be going through, let them know that you are still the God of hope. You are still the God of another chance. Let them know you will never leave them nor forsake them. Let them know you're able to stir them up. Do it tonight in the name of Jesus. Bless this jurisdiction, the Virginia Fort jurisdiction. Bless our leaders. Bless our bishop in the name of Jesus. Every pastor, we speak hope to you now. Every pastor, we speak renewal to you now. Revival to you now. Yet time in the name of Jesus. Jesus' name we pray. And all the 
saints said amen. Amen and amen. Amen. We thank God for you being here on the night. Amen. The scripture reading coming from Psalms, the 24th chapter. Amen. And it reads, the Bible says, the earth is the Lord in the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded upon the seas and established upon the floods. Who shall ascend unto the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in the holy place? He that have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and ye be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Say loud. May God bless his word. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we've come to that part of the service where we are ready to do what we do. We're ready to worship our God. And right now we're going to enter in. We're going to enter into the holy place. We're going to bring the sacrifice of praise. Right now we're going to have our praise and worship team assemble. And I want you to prepare your hearts because this is a time to just give unto the Lord the glory that is due his name. This is a time to reach out and touch heaven. This is a time where we do what we do. I deliver you now into the capable hands of our jurisdictional minister of music, Pastor Elder Kermit Griffin. I'm going to say praise the Lord. It's good to be here tonight to see all your, well, I was going to say smiling faces, but uh, it's good to see your faces and your your presence here. It's always a good time to praise the Lord. It always makes you feel better. And we're asking those, if, if you can't stand with us tonight, we'd appreciate it. If you can't stand, that's okay. Just clap your hands and pat your feet, and let's sing this, these songs together and put yourself in it. We welcome those who are watching on Facebook and YouTube. Just set the atmosphere in your home tonight. If you would just sing unto the Lord with your heart, I guarantee you he'll begin to lift the heavy load. Somebody say, lift the heavy load. Yeah, he'll begin to lift the load and give you some strength for tonight. Is that all right? Well, somebody shout hallelujah for me tonight. Come on. Come on, say it again. Hallelujah. Say there's a there's a praise in this everybody
God is here. Can you say God is here? Can you say it again? God is here. He's here. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands in his presence this, this evening? Just lift your hands this evening. Hallelujah. He's here. He's already here. He's already here. He's here. We've come to worship him. Open your hearts and worship him. He's here. Oh, yes, Lord. You're already here. Yes, hallelujah. Come on, just love on him, Zion. Love on him, hallelujah. He's brought us from a mighty long ways, hallelujah. And we didn't know we were going to get to this point this far this year, but he brought us here, so we praise him tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. you in the sanctuary. Lord, we worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we come to bow before you. Just because you've been so good. Lord, we thank you for your blessing. Lord, we come to give you
Thank you, Jesus. Blessed is your name. Great is your name. Holy is your name. And we thank you, Lord. And we praise you, Lord, because you've been so good. And you've been so, so kind. And we thank you for allowing us to come to your throne of grace to sing songs of worship and adoration. Thank you for receiving us tonight, Lord. And put your stamp of approval on the remainder of this service. Let your presence rest upon your people. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. For the rest of this night, have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. The praise team is coming down. Hallelujah. Say amen for our expediter tonight. Pastor G. You know, it's just ringing in me. Blessed is his name. The name by which I was born again. The name by which I was healed. The name that transforms me. The name that is a strong tower of my refuge. If you agree, if you're a witness, just wave your hand. Oh, because Jesus is Lord. Jesus is King. Hallelujah. Right now, we're going to honor and worship our King. The worship continues. This is where we get to honor him with our substance. We get to give back to him just a portion of what he has given to us. Right now, we're going to receive our expediter of finance, Pastor Alvin Rooks, and he will take this portion of our service. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good that we're here on tonight. We are enjoying Jesus. We had a great service on today. And we are going to continue to give God the praise enabling us to be here and to give him all the glory. We want to thank God for our leaders that are leading us, our Bishop, Bishop D. Wesley Hardy Sr., Bishop Herman Crockett, Bishop Chase, all of the superintendents and administrative assistants, Nicholson, to all of the pastors and all of the women of the Lord, our supervisors, Dr. Sherry Johnson, the pastor's wives, and certainly we cannot leave out the queen of this fourth ecclesiastical jurisdiction, Virginia Four, Mother Doris Hardy. Let's give these leaders a big God bless your hand. It is well with my soul. And I bless God tonight for the privilege to be standing here after a whole year, going on two years. God is just good. He's a keeper. And God knows I want to be kept. What you say about it? We want to uh, receive an offering that is worthy of God blessing us to be in at this 12th annual Workers' Conference. Is that right? Amen. We're still here, but by the grace of God. I'm going to start this offering off with $100. Now the Lord say $150. Obey the Lord. It's a blessing to be able to give. Amen. I still got water. I ain't got to worry about my mortgage. Got some food. My lights are on. I got two two, three pair of shoes. Isn't God wonderful? And you can sleep at night. You ain't got to worry about nothing. 
Amen. I want you to help us tonight because God certainly is good to us and those are not words that are empty. Those words are meaningful because we have so much to give God the praise for. The ushers are standing to assist you and uh, those of you who are viewing Facebook and streaming, you can uh, show you'll see along with us because giving is a part of the worship service. And the Bible says, give and it shall be given good measures, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Those of you who are viewing, you can cash app, dollar sign, C-O-G-I-C-V-A-4. That's dollar sign, C-O-G-I-C-V-A-4. Let's get a good offering here tonight. What you say about it? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to thank you for blessing us for sustaining us, for having our back. It all belongs to you. And we give you praise now as things are loosening up. And we're going to praise you and thank you for all that you are doing. Continue to bless us every seed and every sower tonight. Restore it back to your people, 40, 60, Yea, even a hundredfold. Your name shall be praised. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen and amen. While the ushers are receiving the offering, I'm going to ask that the music department give us something to energize us even more. Let's go higher. Higher in the Lord. Praise God. There's something about that name. There's none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Let's give this praise and worship team a big hand as they come.
privilege back in the hands of our expert idol, Ella G. Webster Harden Jr. Tell somebody, tell somebody that Jesus is wonderful. Amen. Praise the Lord. to proceed into this next part. I just want to give honor to where honor is due. We have been through much change, much change. We've had dates and we've had move dates. We've had a general assembly sessions and we've had election. But I want to acknowledge that a key person who has facilitated us with the information, the help, the expertise, and most of all, the hard work, devoted work, has been our jurisdictional secretary. And if you would just give a round of applause and appreciation to our jurisdictional secretary, Dr. Krachina Chase, amen. Amen. God is good. How about some of the time? Maybe most of the time? God is good and he is worthy to be praised. We want to take a moment and let's salute the giant of the church of God in Christ. The best bishop that you can find anywhere, any denomination. Stand to your feet. Facebook Live, let's salute our leader, the Honorable, the Right Reverend, Bishop G. Wesley Hardy. Amen. We love our leader. And I don't know if you knew, know or not, but there's been a building named after somebody in the house. James Madison University searched all over, could not find anybody greater than our own saintly supervisor, the first black graduate of James Madison University. Let's salute our supervisor, the great Dr. Sherry Johnson. Amen, what an honor, what an honor. And to the fragrance of the house, our queen, we love her. Amen, well, tomorrow morning, there will be ordination and licensing ceremony. The men are asked to dress in your class B attire. Women, white habits, if at all possible. But if for some reason you have not added a white habit to your wardrobe, then you can wear a white suit, anything white. She just want us to be in the house and represent it during the ordination and licensing ceremony. And our speaker, like Bishop said, we get the best from California, but he stopped in Richmond by the gates of faith the Richmond District, none other than Elder J. Cal Nicholson, will be our speaker on tomorrow morning. There will be Zoom meetings taking place. Before our morning service, our queen, Lady Martha Crockett, and the deacon wives, so the pastor's wives, elders and ministers' wives and the deacon wives. There's gonna be a special Zoom conference. The theme is the Daughters of Priscilla. 
taking place between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. on tomorrow. So call everybody you know and tell them to please be represented on tomorrow. Tomorrow evening at 5.30 p.m., all licensed missionaries, our supervisor want to share with us business of importance. So the Zoom conference, 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. On tomorrow night, our speaker will be none other than Superintendent Donald General. He's the chairman of our pastors and elders, and he is the superintendent of the Solid Rock District. So we want you to be present on tomorrow night. And well, as you know, I also represent the pastor's purse. And I want to just tell every pastor's aid representative, please do not forget to take care of your pastor this week. They still have to give their report, still the same amount of offering, if not greater. So please call your members at your church, surprise your pastor, and slip him a nice envelope. They call that the pastor's purse. So please slip them a nice envelope and take, make their load this week a little lighter. God bless you and welcome to the Virginia 4th, 12th Annual Workers' Conference because it is harvest time. God bless you. Praise the Lord. It is harvest time. I was witness earlier today in our service that the Lord spoke to us mightily and delivered a great word to us. We're going to have an introduction now of our guest speaker. Our bishop is going to come and he's gonna set the table, but I can just tell you from my own witness, get ready, get ready, get ready. Please stand on your feet and receive our presiding prelate, the Honorable Bishop G. Wesley Hardy. God bless you, thank you, Pastor Hardy. You may be seated, thank you so much. Well, I feel good, don't you? Amen. I looked out this morning and the clouds were kind of dark. I said, it looks like it's going to rain. And then about an hour later, they were gone. And I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you because I knew if it rained, you may not be here. But we thank God you're here. And uh, we thank God for all of our leaders. To those present tonight, Bishop Crockett, Bishop Chase, Dr. Nicholson, God bless you all, our pastors, superintendents, and of course, uh, Dr. Johnson, we celebrate you. Yeah, you somebody, you got a building named after you. They let me go in a few buildings, but they didn't name nothing after me, so I thank the Lord to, to my precious wife. We thank God for her. She has been with me so many, many years. To Dr. Chase, who we celebrate because of the way she just got us through some difficult times through the election time and all that happened and to uh, the committee. I, now, I don't know if y'all can read my letter, but I celebrated my committee, uh, that the, the election committee, led by uh, Don, Dr. Donald General and Dr. Uh, uh, Lassiter. Are they president here? They did a great job, did a great job. Along with others, they did a great job. I appreciate you so much. And uh, they should have elected me. They just missed the golden opportunity. But that's the way life is. They should have got me when they could. Praise God. On a more serious note, we're praying for the family of General. Well, he's he is a general. He is a, on the general board, but he's passed away. Amen. We're gonna miss Bishop Lauren Mann. He was a close friend, a friend of mine, the face of the of the national church, and uh, that family has lost a great man. 
Amen. He represented the East. He represented the East. And now the East has no representation. But God is good. Somebody say, God is good all the time. Now, if you were here today, if you were in the house or you were viewing today, we have a man of God that's come from Oklahoma. Amen. A man that God has mightily used today to teach and to just inspire us. And uh, Pastor Jeremiah Jones, he lit this house up. So I believe they have a battle for him. But uh, I can tell you tonight, we brought a preacher in. He's here tonight. I told my wife in these 12 years, I haven't heard nobody know better. Good God, he just shook this house. It was inspiring. Every pastor needs to get. be sure you view it. It's on YouTube or Facebook. If you aren't here, view it, view it, view it before the week is out. View it. It'll bless you. It'll encourage you. Amen. So I believe that's coming now. Um, I'm not expediting. God bless your son. Come right on. This is my son. He's in charge. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Well, our hearts are filled with expectation. And now we will have ministry of music one more time. And then after that, the next voice you will hear will be that of Pastor Jeremiah Jones. Amen.
stands to God and forever be his countenance. Master.
Somebody say peace. He's gonna give you peace. He's gonna give you peace. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Praise team going down at this time. Prepare your hearts for the word. You welcome our special guest tonight. Can you say amen as he comes? That's Jeremiah Jones. Come on, say amen. Huh? Hallelujah. Just lift your hands up to the Lord this moment. The choir just got through from singing. Whenever the Lord says peace, there will be peace. I don't need everybody. I just need somebody just to say peace. So, Father, in this moment, we thank you for who you are. We bless you. We honor you. For you are the God that sits on high. You're omnipotent. You're omniscient. God, you're omnipresent. And even on tonight, we thank you for peace being in our lives. We thank you for all that you're doing now, God. We pray, open up our ears that we may hear, our minds that we may understand, and our hearts that we may receive. And God, we're going to be careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and praise. And oh yeah, Satan, just to put you on notice, you made a mistake by letting us come together tonight. And God, we want to let you know we adore you, God. We adore you like never before. And guess what? We will stand on your promise that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. And God, we bless you in advance for what's about to take place in this room. In your name, we pray. If you believe that, clap your hands and let your mouth through your mask match the sound of it. That would be good if that was for me, but we're talking about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Come on, open your mouth and let God hear the sound from your mouth and the sound of your hands. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on, I dare somebody just exalt him above whatever you're facing. Exalt him above whatever you are going through. Hallelujah. On your way to your seat, just really quick look at somebody say, tonight's my night. Tonight's my night. Now point at your heart and point at them. Point at your heart and point at them. That means I love you. That means I love you. That means I love you. Come on, while you're standing, let's give honor to God, to the angel of the jurisdiction, our bishop, our leader. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give honor to God for our leader, our bishop. Come on. None like the bishop, G. Wesley Hardy. Amen. We thank God for our first administrative assistant, Bishop Herman Crockett. Amen. Our second administrative assistant, the one and only, the one and only, the Bishop J.A. Chase Jr. Happy birthday to you, sir. Love you. Amen to our administrative assistant, administrative assistant Nicholson. Amen. And to our administrative assistant White. God bless you. To all the pastors and elders, a slew of men of God who are here. Amen. To our saintly mother, the supervisor. Come on. I just found she got a builder named after her. <laughs> we thank God for Supervisor Johnson. Amen. And to the queen. I felt the coming America spirit come up on me. I ain't going to do it, though. We thank God for the queen, the fragrance of the jurisdiction. Come on, let's thank God for Mom Hardy. Amen. And to all the, the district missionaries and the cabinets, we just say praise the Lord to everybody that is in the household of faith. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We do honor God tonight for his allowing us to be in the building. Anybody excited about being in the building? Amen. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for men to dwell together in unity. I do give honor to God who is the head of my life. I'm so grateful to God for this yet another opportunity to stand before his people and to stand in the stead of our leader, our bishop. Why are you saying our leader and our bishop? Because it is always protocol to submit yourself to the leader of the house wherever you may go. And he's my bishop while I am here. And if y'all talk about my bishop, we're going to have some problems. Amen. Somebody said, try Jesus, don't try me because I throw hands. Amen. And I love Bishop Imam Hardy. Amen. 
Um, he is the gentle giant of the brotherhood. Amen. The gentle giant of the brotherhood. And I do remember, Bishop, we were in a small hot room at the leadership conference. Amen. And Bishop Hardy was there and he, he kind of looked in the seat. He wasn't doing too much movement and he kind of kept looking like this. And then uh, he walked up to me and said, uh, you know what you're talking about. I want you to come to my jurisdiction. I said, yes, sir, Bishop. I will be honored to come. And that was supposed to be last year. But God somehow knew everything was going to be happening and what we needed to come for this year. Amen. Anybody glad you was today? Was today not awesome? Amen. I'm so grateful to God. Amen. I see some of uh, my, my, my God brother is here. Amen. He's a new member of uh, Virginia 4th. Amen. Deacon Dante Colbert. Amen. Thank God from Washington, D.C. He came down. And uh, also thankful to one of my spiritual sons and, and my new daughter-in-law, I guess I would say. Amen. Pastor Sam and, and First Lady Asia Grooms, Overseer Grooms. Amen. All the way from North Carolina. Drove up from your neck of the woods. Joe from your neck of the woods. And to my biggest friend who is watching right now, and please excuse me while I blow the love of my life a good old kiss. Mwah. Love you, baby. Amen. To my wife, Laddie Jones. Amen. All the way back in Oklahoma City. And the kids, they ready for me to come home. They ready for me to come home. It just don't seem right. This is the only trip I've been out of the state since COVID. And that means so much to me because of the man of God who allotted me to come. I do also thank God for those that have come in ministry and to help serve in the capacity which they have. Thank God for Minister Jeremy Thomas being with me tonight. He's on the organ there, a ministry of part excellent. I'm not going to belabor the time. I do want to preach the word of God. I feel such a heavy presence in my spirit. And uh, I really um, want to jump into the word of what has been. I have had uh, such a great time um, for these last few hours that I've been here since yesterday. And I really can say um, I, could, I really could move here and become a member of Virginia 4th. Amen. <laughs> I really could. I really could. Um, but my bishop and Bishop Hardy will have to fight because Bishop Kobe would not allow me to move. Amen. We do thank God for my leader. He is the reason why I am here. He gave me permission to go. We are in our women's convention, and he allotted me to come. He said only because it's Bishop Hardy. And so he speaks highly of Bishop and first and Mom Hardy, and he loves you guys to death and gives his love. Um, 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 I'm going to go to Second Chronicles chapter number 20. But if you would be so kind, allow me to bring a little bit of the south to the east, if that's all right. Um, so I am what's called a church uh, 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 a mutt, if you will. And you'll understand what I mean by that in a few seconds. Um, I, I believe God does not limit himself to just a organization or just a person or a gender, if you will. But he's uh, 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 everything to everyone. So when I was a kid, growing up on the only side of Chicago, which is the south side of Chicago, um, when I, I saw some hands go up, don't, don't get the set trip, and that's it, that's family, amen. Um, um, and I, I, there, was a, there was a person by the name of Reverend, uh, y'all may have heard of him, Reverend Clay Evans. He was a pastor of the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church, 4521 South Princeton Avenue. And uh, he, he, would, he would come to the mic, and I was a little kid, and he would say something like this. He would say, Father, I stretch my hands to, to thee. No. I had an old school church right here. With John, thyself from me. Tell me where, where would I, I, I go? I went back to my home church, Apostolic Pentecostal Church in Morgan Park, and one of the old church mothers will walk up and she'll say this, I need the old, oh y'all know 
know that one. I need thee. When you need him. Free up. Oh my son. I need thee. Let's church just a little bit. Oh, 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 oh bless. Be my shunda. Me now. My Savior. I come to, to thee. Then I went to a place called 108 South 20 South Loop. And there was a guy by that time named Superintendent James W. Campbell that said it like this. Yes! What my seal saint said. Yes, he must shun that of us. Yes, yes, he must shun that. Yes, yes. Then the mother stood up and got fancy with it and said, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Anybody got a heart in their soul? Yes, Lord. just to prophesy real quick just prophesy to somebody real quick and say he's doing it right now now if you don't believe it don't respond but if you believe it I dare you respond with a praise from your hands or from your mouth just say he's doing it he's doing it he's doing it yes sir yes sir yes sir yes ma'am he's doing it he's doing it if I could, if I wasn't in COVID I'd run around this church because what he's about to do for me right We got to act like we got sense, Jeremy. We are on the East Coast. The more you play, the more they going to praise. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Second Chronicles chapter number 20. 
come back off me here. I got his ring up here. Second Chronicles chapter number 20. Mm. There's a prophetic release in the house. Oh, Verse number 14 says, if you can tear me down out here, hearing some type of distortment. Thank you. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Stay there, Jeremy. And he said... Hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat thus saith the Lord unto you be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them before they come up by the cliff of Ziz and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeru. Here it is. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still. That sounds better. And see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head and his face to the ground, and all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord, and the Levites and the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Kohites, and stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa and went into forth, they went forth. Jehoshaphat stood and said, here's what I need you to hear. Hear me, O Judah. Judah is praise. So tonight you're going to be the praisers of the text. Hear me, O Virginia, forth. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe in his prophets and so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. And that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. And to say praise the Lord for his mercy endure forever. And here's my key verse. And when they began to sing and to praise. The Lord set ambushments up against the children of Amnon. Oh my God. Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were smitten. For the children of Amnon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of the Mount of Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked to the multitude and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth and none escaped. I'm hanging my hat here. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, let me read that again. And when Bishop Hardy and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance. Let me say that again. And when Bishop Hardy and his people came to take away from the spoil of them, they found among them a harvest, both riches with dead bodies and precious jewel, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And there were three days in gathering of the spoil because it was so much. I don't need everybody. I just need somebody real quick just to say, neighbor, it's harvest time. Uh, Y'all caught that, y'all. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, it's harvest time. Look at one more person because they didn't hear the last two didn't hear you. Just say, neighbor, it's harvest time. 
I would like to preach from a message tonight. My mouth is about to put it in my hands. My mouth is about to put it in my hands. Father, open up our ears that we may hear, our minds that we may understand, and our hearts that we may receive. When we give your name the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. My mouth is about to put it in my hands. I have a question for you tonight, and that question would be this. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? What would you go after if you knew you would seize it? What would you do if you knew you could not fail? Beloved, here we have here, and I might as well just go ahead and turn this off. Here we have here a very familiar passage of scripture. In these times that we're living in, it's kind of familiar of what's going on in this text. King Jehoshaphat has come. He's a son who has had previous examples of bad kingdom ruling or reigning before him. He was one that says, I got to uproot all of the old religious stuff of my forefathers and really get back to the trenches of what it means to be sold out to God. So he says, I have to go into this kingdom mindset in a different way and putting God as the priority of my life, of the kingdom. So I have to undo some things that was built up that has caused the people not to walk in full victory. The second thing he has to do is to be able to now also deal with the attacks of the former, uh, 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 if you will, adversaries that has been generationally coming after him and his bloodline. So now as a king, I have to do a couple of things. I have to undo some stuff. I have to prepare some stuff. And I have to fight against some stuff that I did not initiate in the first place. Just like some of us, we're fighting things that we had nothing to do with by our own choice. But the fact that we carry the bloodline of whom we are connected to brings forth an attack against us that was not necessarily our battle. And while we are fighting in this battle, we're faced with some things that makes us feel as though we will never overcome them. And so what Jehoshaphat has to do, he has to surround himself with men and women or warriors who have a mindset, watch this, to seek after God first and then deal with people. See, what I found out is when you are anointed to do something, the anointing that's on your life is actually an attractiveness to all kind of chaos. Uh, when you are anointed, it's not all easy days. It ain't no high fives. It ain't no cools. We gonna chill out. Uh, but really, the anointing is like a magnet for every demon in hell. Seems like every principality wants to come and show up on your in your life. Show up on your front door. Show up in all kind of areas in your life, in your marriage, in uh, in your children, on the job, in your business, in your church. So, Sadly to say, it's a whole lot of demonic activity happening in the church. I didn't say this church, I just said the church. I didn't say in Virginia 4th, I just said the church. Why? Because you're always going to have somebody who ain't really gave God a yes like you did. And the fact they ain't really gave God a yes like you did disqualifies them from walking in the anointing of your yes. I need you to tap somebody real quick. If you're not next to them, just point at them and say, hey, have you given God a real yes? Uh, I can tell how anointed you are based on how you have been faced with obstacles this last year. If you ain't had a bout of depression, if you ain't had a bout of fight with mental anger and all kind of anxiety, if you have not been stressed out in your body, if you have not been feeling burdensome within the last year, then I need you to check your spiritual connection because only those who have been facing uh, uh, some things are the ones who's carrying a level of anointing. The devil doesn't want you to be anointed. 
And so in his attack, Supervisor Johnson, uh, what he does is to try to get you to shut your mouth. He tries to get you to internalize everything that you are facing and to make you feel that no one else around you understand the burden that you are feeling. It's a spirit of pride that he tries to produce unto the children of Israel and to the well as to the God's chosen people to make us feel as though nobody around us understands. But you have to learn what the Bible says. Paul says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's trying to, Christ is trying to tell his disciples, I need you to hear exactly that you are not going through this by yourself. It is the attack of the enemy to try to keep you to keep your mouth closed. That's why you have to now put on a mask when you're in public places because you could potentially be spreading something that will kill somebody instead of helping somebody live. Come on, Jones. And so while you are in this predicament, the enemy says, not only do I want you to put a mask on naturally, mm-hmm, but I want you to put one on spiritually because the longer I can keep you to keep your mouth closed then that means I got victory in your house here's what's going on here you got to realize that your mouth is the very thing that causes heaven to move on your behalf your mouth is the very thing that shifts you from one place of pain to a place of peace Uh, the devil don't care about what clothes you wear he doesn't care about what car you drive or what house you may live in or how much money he got you got in your bank account he long as he knows that if he can keep your mouth closed you'll never walk in the victory you were designed to walk in I need you to encourage somebody real quick and say neighbor the devil had just ran out of time because whatever he was supposed to do to you his time is up you should have had the crazy meltdown last year you should have had the breakdown last week you should have went crazy and had a heart attack two days ago but he's out of time because tonight God got you around the right person that ain't gonna let their mouth stay closed he got you around a praiser that's gonna open their mouths if the mass is on their face and still give God the greatest praise because something is about to shift I don't need the church goers I don't need the religious folk right here I need those that got a relationship just to begin to open up your mouth and for the next 15 seconds give the devil a preview of what he's about to hear for the rest of the night one two three go go See, I had to do that because I found out that everybody that come to church only come to church. But there's a few of us that says, I'm not coming to leave the same way I came. But I came to get something from the Lord. Come on here. Take a seat. Y'all making me nervous. Y'all making me nervous. So the text now lets us know. Overseer, if I can just get a little bit here, I'll be all right. So the text now let us know that there is a fight that's going on and there is a continuous challenge that what the uh, the children of Israel are facing let me see if I can preach to somebody yes let me see if I can if I, if I can come down somebody's street it feels as though when I get over one battle and I feel like I got this battle in check here comes something else over here and it feels a moment when I'm trying to manage this pain here comes something from here and you're trying to figure out well wait a minute what's going on 
on. And when you are finally realizing you are under attack, here comes a blow from your past. And it's from somebody you helped out before. It's from somebody you prayed for and helped them out. But now this pain that comes to you, you're trying to figure out which way do I turn. And here's what Paul says it like this in the New Testament. We are troubled on every side, which means now that caught a lot of trouble in my life because he's trying to produce something out of me. It's something that's on the inside that God's trying to get out of me. If you're going through a whole lot, that does not mean you are weak. That simply means, watch this for about five praisers, that God can trust you with trouble. Uh, Y'all gonna hit me. Everybody can be trusted with trouble because those that can be trusted with trouble, thank you Bishop for helping me out, have a response to their trouble like this. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Which means now the more trouble I'm facing means the more trust I'm having in him. Let me catch my old school church right here. When we old school church was saying like this, we've come this far by faith leaning on the law trusting in his holy word he's never failed me yet oh 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 I can't turn around now we've come this far by faith and the more faith I have that means I'm about to be elevated because he takes me from faith to faith and from glory to glory so the more I go through I'm not going down it's God setting me up for elevation I just heard a prophetic word God says tell 25 praises that everything they thought they lost they about to get it back with their next praise I don't need everybody I just need only 25 of you that know you got something that was stolen from you just take five seconds real quick and use your mouth and give God a praise Oh God. So now we find that Jehoshaphat is in the middle of a situation in which he's trying to overcome past stuff. And now he's currently dealing with some new stuff. And I got you to help you go home and do your homework. Read the whole 20th chapter. You find out that Jehoshaphat now he does three things came out Shandorobosaya that requires an immediate change in his life. The Bible says he number one goes to the prayer and he taps into prayer and says Lord hold on these are the people that you brought up out of the bondage. These are the one that built a temple for you to dwell. These are the one who has endured all kind of craziness and you mean to tell me you're going to let them the enemies, the Moabites the Ammonites, the Hittites, the Jebusites try to cause us to walk in failure he begins to petition and he places a request out there then the Bible says number second P he does he receives a prophecy and what does he do the Bible says give me seven minutes Reverend don't push me too hard yet he says now to him he says the spirit of the prophet fells upon Jehaziel and the spirit of the Lord comes upon him that he begins to prophesy and he says I know you're used to fighting with your hands I know you're used to fighting with your feet he says but this battle is not yours you've got to learn that in the middle of all the COVID mess uh, that we've been under a chat uh, that this battle is not yours uh, you've got to learn uh, how to tap into the spirit 
spirit man and know how much you are a believer that we live by this admiration. Watch this that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they're mighty through God due to the pulling down of every stronghold. I wish I had somebody from the motherland church that understood what I was talking about. I've never seen in my day and time so many people in the church arguing and fighting over stuff that doesn't even make sense to the kingdom. Out of their flesh to make it all kind of opposing theological arguments. All kind of philosophies that has nothing to do with the power of the revelation of God. But I remember the old mothers and the old fathers they didn't get in no arguments what they begin to do is they begin to pray and here's my favorite scripture that they would say and I wish the church would get back to saying it if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face here's our problem we don't want to turn from our wicked ways he says if you turn which means to repent. I know a lot of folk are in the military and you hear the about face and some people in their own understanding try to say we gotta make a 360 when it's not a 360. It's a 180 which means if you do a 360 you turn all the way around and you're back in the same predicament huh? but you, you do a 180 huh? you go opposite of the way that you were going huh? I'm almost through Jeremy huh? I got four minutes and I'm ready to ride huh? the Bible says that they begin to pray huh? and prophecy falls upon Jehaziel huh? and he said to him huh? for about five Bible scholars huh? he says tomorrow huh? it will be Emmanuel huh? what do you mean by you say that huh? He said, tomorrow, you no need to fight in this battle. For God will be with us. That means Emmanuel, God with us. I don't know about you, but do I got somebody in here that can say, I feel my breakthrough about to take off in this room. Tell your neighbor say neighbor I want to apologize right now but I feel a praise on the inside that's about to help the whole jurisdiction get out of the funk that they have been in get out of the pain that they've been suffering I feel a healing praise I feel a breakthrough praise I feel a blessing praise I feel like things I'm about to turn around for our good I'm feeling good maybe in one minute and we ready to ride the Bible says that he not only prayed number one he prayed number two he prophesied to number three watch this he began to connect himself with the praisers he prays in order for you to take advantage of your harvest you gotta learn how to start in prayer you gotta learn how to prophesy to your own self and you gotta learn how to grow in to praise the Lord the Bible says he told the people that tomorrow this time God is going to give us the victory I don't need you to talk to nobody that ain't said nothing the whole time but look at somebody real quick and say neighbor go on ahead and let me prophesy to you and tell them say neighbor tomorrow God is going to give us the victory God is going to give us the victory y'all ain't said it like you believe it God is going to give us the victory so why is my harvest over there and I'm right here it's because you got to learn how to praise him before you get to it God's trying to see will your praise be prophetic will your praise right where you are be prophetic 
uh, and go into your tomorrow. Uh, go into your next week. Uh, oh, I ain't got no praises. Never mind. Uh, will your praise uh, go to the place uh, where the devil thought he could kick you out of? Uh, I need you to see this. Uh, he opens up his mouth uh, and tell the troops, uh, hey, y'all, uh, I need y'all to get ready because uh, we are about to praise. Uh, tell your neighbor say neighbor get ready get ready I'm about to praise God the Bible says he appointed singers he appointed praisers he appointed praise singers he appointed praises I need y'all over here to say glory I need y'all over here to say hallelujah. I need y'all over here to say thank you. I need y'all over here to say Jesus. Y'all ain't caught it yet. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. We about to praise God because I feel my breakthrough. Let's go, Jeremy. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. I'm about to praise God because there's some stuff that the devil stole from me. There's some family that's strung out on drugs. There's some people that are sick, but I believe every time I shout glory, a hallelujah comes. And a thank you and a Jesus when we're all in the mind of a praiser. What things will come to us? Uh, let me help somebody. Come on, Pastor. Bring that seat there. I need you to see something. Bring it to me. Sit it right there. Thank you, sir. Sit down. He, I know we know he's Pastor Hardy Jr. But right now, he's going to be the God of our salvation. Let me show you in the text. It says that now the King Jehoshaphat began to pray and ask God some things. Come on real quick. Come on, Bennett. Go on right there. Stand on that X. Yes, sir. And here's what we have to realize uh, that the praying things uh, that Jehoshaphat did uh, was number one, he prayed. Uh, so when he prayed, uh, I'm Jehoshaphat. Uh, I'm praying to God. Uh, no, Bishop, let me use you. Uh, he's Jehoshaphat. Uh, he's praying to God, uh, which means prayer uh, takes you to the throne. Going up to the throne, he makes his petition to the throne of God. And when his petition is over, come on down, Bishop. He comes back down to where he is or where he was waiting on the Lord to answer his prayer. But what does the Lord do? Prayer takes you to God. But God response by sending an angel. He sends an angel down and it's called Jehaziel and he prophesies upon Jehoshaphat saying that tomorrow you're going to see God move on your behalf when the message is over the angel leaves and the angel goes out of the way on the next day Jehoshaphat stands up and he says I need y'all to help me praise him come on glory hallelujah thank you Jesus now you gotta realize why go move Bishop why did this happen I got 
to show you something because Jehoshaphat is the leader to help us usher the presence of the Lord. You got to learn. You got to be in tune with the leader in order for you to get your harvest. You got to follow the leader. Y'all don't like that good old preacher. You've got to learn that when the leader moves, he's moving on the word for your future. Y'all will catch that next week. Here's what the difference about yesterday and tomorrow is yesterday. I prayed for it. God gave me an angel. But today, I'm going to praise him. I'm not going to ask. I'm going to praise him. Here's the significance about your praise. That when you begin to praise, come on, lead the people, Bishop. Tell them glory. Watch what happens. You got to see scripture come alive. You better keep following. The Bible says that now God inhabits the praise of his people. The more you praise, God gets up and brings his throne and comes among where you are. Every time you open your mouth, God goes to the praise. You got to realize when I open up my mouth, I ain't asking the devil to leave me alone. When I open up my mouth, I'm telling God, come by ya, come by ya, come by here. I, I, I got a reason to praise. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor, David wrote something about me. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear and be glad. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, here's where I need your participation. Tell them, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let exhaust and sound his name together. The more I praise, the enemy's confused. Yo! 
love you. Jesus, tell your neighbor, neighbor, I praise him for my bishop. I praise him for my pastor. I praise him for the queen. I praise him for Dr. Secretary. I praise him because I show you be stable you're going to have stability your faith secures your stability you become unstable when you start doubting for the bible says a double minded man is un in all so now my instability is connected to how I believe so, he says now, 
believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Now, I needed your belief to be there because I'm going to send someone to prophetically declare something in your life that you are not expecting. Before you can prophesy it into your own life, you got to hear it in prayer. Bishop, Bishop, I'm a young old soul, but, 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 but my mama and them, my mama and them used to say, little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. No prayer. Prophecy is never supposed to surprise you. Prophecy is to confirm what he told you in private. Oh, man. Can I please come back? Can I please come back? So what happens is, the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every be a step. Watch what he does. Watch what he does. He prophesies through Jehaziel, and then Je uh, uh, Jehoshaphat comes right behind and confirms what Jehaziel says to the people. But he wasn't talking to church folk. Watch what he says. Judah and all Jerusalem. He specifically speaks to the tribe of praise. Because if the praise is right, everybody else will benefit. If your praise is right, everybody else around you will benefit. I'll say that one more again. If you praise right, everybody else around you will benefit. So all night I've been trying to get you to get your praise right so everybody around you can benefit. But there's some people that act like they don't believe that your praise is what's going to produce in your life. How did you make it out of COVID? I never stopped praising. I never didn't say I was under attack because I was under attack. But I heard an old songwriter say, I never lost my praise. I'm through. And I wish I just had one runner that'll run for me and get this point across when you see it. The Bible says the Moabites, Ammonites are at a place that God tells the location to Jehoshaphat where they are. He gives them intel as to where they are, but then says to them, stand still. Now, ain't no way you're going to tell me where, my, where them ninjas at and you don't want me to go nowhere? <laughs> you want me to stay right here? And I can go get them? Why you tell me? Watch this. Because sometimes God's trying to tell you where you're going without you really having to move the way you thought you was going to have to move. He says, they over there by that Greek. You just stand still. He says, okay. In the middle of me standing still, let me go ahead and praise him. So he begins to praise, and when he begins to praise, everybody within the vicinity begins to praise, and the praise gets so high that while they're in the midst of praising God, their enemies, ready for battle, God allows what that praise did over there to come over there to their enemies, and their enemies look at each other, I say, you the enemy. No, you the enemy. Watch what happens. They kill each other because the praise they did over there. I heard secretary say this. She said, tomorrow, the bishop chose from the Richmond South, the speaker, the speaking. I think she said that. Which means... Your enemies could be in the Richmond South, but you right here in Chesapeake. And by the time you open your mouth, what belongs to you in Richmond South, when you arrive, is going to be waiting on you. Y'all to catch that next week. Maybe I'm working too hard. In other words, when I praise from this location, it doesn't stop at this location. It starts here but goes to wherever my harvest is. I don't need nobody that did not plant a seed to open your mouth. But everybody that planted a seed last year, last night, 2019, 2018, the Lord just told me to tell you, your harvest is ready. And it's now waiting on you to open your mouth. Your seed has produced and it's ready let me bless about five praises. I just need one runner right here. 
You ready? Because when you praise God, your enemies kill themselves. You ready? Here it is. The Bible says they walk up and the dead people are dead. They dead. Enemies are dead and they full of stuff. Brother Preacher, I don't know who you are, but I, I, I'm loving your praise. Can you just do me a favor? Do me a favor. And God's going to unlock some stuff in your life. God's going to unlock some stuff in your life with this praise. But it's going to be on your obedience. If you are willing and obedient, you're going to eat the good of the land right here. You ready? This is what it's going to be. This is going to be. The Bible says when they praised, the enemies killed each other. They killed each other dead. That by the time the children of Israel walked upon the location, they were dead, but they were wealthy. If you run, God's going to expedite your blessing. You ready? I want you to hear it. I don't want you just to run, just to run. I want you to hear what's about to happen. Watch this. The wealth of the wicked has been laid up for the just. And you are the just right now. And God says, as you move your feet, I'm going to multiply the sounds of your feet in the ears of your enemy. And every bill that's been stressing you out is about to be depleted. The prayer you've been praying for your family, God says, you ain't going to have to pray another prayer tonight because your praise just fixed it. I'm gonna give you time to run. You ready? One, two, three, go, go. Somebody else needs to run upon your blessing. Somebody else needs to run upon your breakthrough. I only got three runners. Let me run behind the bishop because I feel by the time I get back home, something good is going to happen all my life. I need 20 praises to dance, to shout, 
you believe it, open your mouth and let the church say yes. 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 Now, I'm done, but we about to praise God. Because I need you to have a prophetic praise in this moment. Lift your hands, everybody in the room. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. I need you to see in your mind what belongs in your hands. Son, this sickness is not unto death, but that the glory of the Lord might be revealed in you. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. Come on, just begin to pray, just begin to pray, just begin to pray, just begin to pray. Just begin to pray. Just begin to pray. Glory be to God. Have thou not known? Have thou not heard? Even I, the everlasting Father, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And I believe God. When he says, call upon me, and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things wherewith you have not known. I know somebody's been stressed, somebody's been drained, somebody's been feeling exhausted as though these attacks have come over your life and you could not make it, that you cannot get through it. But I need you to lift your hands, lift your hands. We're done, we're done, we're done. Just done, we're done, we're done. And because God... It's the greatest power We will never Never be defeated I speak strength into your bodies now I speak peace into your spirit I speak a joy Unspeakable And full of glory Come on, lift your hands Just open your mouth Be not weary in well doing for you're in your new season even now come on now let the praise go from your lips not from your hands from your mouths let it bring it to your hands come on come on come on come on come on just 30 more seconds just 30 more seconds come on just 30 more seconds come on 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 Come on, I speak strength to the pastors who's trying to pastor during a pandemic. I speak peace to your minds. I speak strength to your hearts. Come on, you are not going to quit. Not like this. No, 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 no. The devil is a liar. Come on, for the spirit of heaven is put on the garment of praise. I speak strength right now to every first lady that stands strong by her husband. Every missionary, every elder, every body believer. We speak strength right now. Open your mouth. shall never never be defeated come on open your mouth and say and because God is the greatest we shall never never be defeated so father in this moment I thank you for your people I thank you for what you've done in this house tonight. Now, God, let your will be done. Move us forward in strength in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you believe God has done it for you, if you believe it's coming into your hand, clap your hands, open your mouth, and give God praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord very quickly. I want to be obedient and leave a seed in this house and I want to challenge you in being a blessing Bishop I'm leaving my offering for your official day sir 
They got to be a blessing to our bishop for our official day. Amen. We're going to honor our queen tomorrow, I believe, at noon. I'm going to make sure I leave my offering for our bishop, for the queen, and then for our supervisor. Amen. We want to honor the woman of God as well. Amen. It's just right to be right. I want those of you tonight to sow a seed with me. See, harvest only comes as a result of a seed being planted. Rain frustrates people who never planted seeds. I'm going to say that again. Rain frustrates people who never planted seeds. But when you plant seeds, you're happy about the rain. That's God saying, I'm nurturing it, I'm watering it. Tonight, I want you tonight to be a blessing. Pastor, what you asking me for? I'm asking you to give your best seed. My best may not be your best, but I'm sowing tonight $200. Those of you say, I may want to sow with it, fine. Those of you say, I want to sow less, fine. I'm asking you in this moment to ask God, what do I release into this house? If you're going to be sowing with me, sacrificially stand to your feet. You may give two, you may give one, whatever you may be. Now, if your heart is to give 200, you better stand and give 200. If it's a thousand, you better stand and give a thousand. But because God is the greatest power in my shunda, we shall never, never be. If you're standing, everyone, if you're giving, lift that seat up to the Lord. Put this declaration over your seat. Say, I'm a tither and a giver. Come on, say it with authority. I'm a tither and a giver. And I'm blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. And I'm living in my overflow. I am living in Ephesians 3.20. For the rest of my life. Come on, say this is not a dead I owe, but a seed I sow into the destiny that God has for me. Come on, say this seed shall produce a harvest that'll bring glory to the kingdom of heaven. You are in the hands of our ushers at this time. Because God, those of you, Pastor, I don't have no cash on me. It's all right. In this technology, we have Cash App. Huh? We have a kiosk located over here. Cash App. We give it on Cash App. We give it on the kiosk. Hear me clearly. I pronounce and decree and declare that the amount that you sow tonight returns to you with an immediate harvest. Also, I want us to patronize our bishop. Amen. Is that all right? I want you to stop by the bookstore. Let's support our leader. Amen. Let's support our leader. Two amens. Let's support our leader. Let's stop by. Were you blessed by the word tonight? Oh my God. Everyone rest to your feet. I do this in honor and respect. Because the man that I'm bringing to this mic, to this desk, is greater. And greatness deserves respect. Brother Usher, we have someone up in the front. A couple of people up in the front. They're sowing a seed. Hey, my Shonda. Pray for me as I travel, go back. Any pastor any leader the Lord told me to do this for this jurisdiction I was in the hotel last night and again this morning I have I do ministry consulting I do organization reorganization restructuring of ministries to help them grow prepare for better and while I did that I'm a very private person I'm low key behind the scenes and what I charge corporate world for the excellence of the kingdom 
dare not do that for the house of the Lord. I said, God, I want to be a blessing to the people. But the Bible also says a man is worthy of his hire. And so, Bishop, because this is Virginia 4th, any pastor that wants me to do a consulting or anything on their businesses, I'm going to give them $400 discount just because they're Virginia 4th. Nobody else will get this but because the grace is over your life. $400 discount on the services. You can visit my website, jeremiahmjones.com. Reach out to me. Very touchable. I pray that I was a blessing to the jurisdiction. Thank you, Bishop, for allowing me to come. Let's receive our Bishop, our jurisdictional prelate at this time. Come on, let's put our hands together and thank God for the leader, the man of God, Bishop G. Wesley Hart. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, well, well. Um, I thought we had a teacher this morning. It was a teacher. <laughs> Slides and explanations. But tonight... Another side came out. Yakoba Batishi came out. Yakamana na ma, the maid of God. And the Lord said, I have sent a word to lift you, to let you rejoice, rejoice in the things of God. For the Lord said, Much has been spoken in your ears, and I will play the tape for you. I spoke to your need, saith the Lord. Lord, now come out, come in, come in, There are three of you right now going through some very difficult times. But God is saying to you, I will open that door and you will walk through it, saith the Lord. And the enemy will be defeated. Hallelujah. Lord, how can I come not only will I open the door, but I will show you what to do when you get through it. Because you've been asking me, what shall I do? What shall I do? I don't know what to do. And the Lord said, I'm speaking to your need. But you've been walking the floor, said the Lord, wondering what to do. Hallelujah. Well, now I must see Kenny, Kimanani, Kenani, Kenani. The Lord is saying to you, things have looked bleak, but I want you to begin to trust me. Stop complaining and just trust me. Hallelujah. Somebody say, trust him. Trust him, trust him, trust him. God bless. God bless you. Pastor Jeremiah Jones. God bless. God bless. Well, we're about ready to go home. Tomorrow, we're going to have a great day. I want you to stop by the bookstore and get my book that I wrote. You don't have it because you don't live down here. And you haven't been to the website to get it. And I didn't want you to buy it from Amazon because it don't make no money much for them. So go buy it. And the Lord said, if you will buy this book, I will bless you. Lord have mercy. <laughs> well, well, you know, it, it just came out. I'll leave it there. The miracles of God. I'll leave it right there. But if you need a miracle, if you need healing, that's a good book to buy. I said, that's a good book to buy. Stand on your feet. I got to let you get out of here. Hallelujah. You know what? No, I tell you what. Stand, stand. We get ready to go. I said, Lord, as long as it's been since folks been in church. Some haven't been in church in almost a year, over a year. Your church been, you know, you've been, aren't you zoomed out? Anybody zoomed out? <laughs> I, I watched y'all tonight. I said, my God, it looked like old times. It's been so long. It's been so long. And the preacher preached like it had been a long time. <laughs> he said, I'm going to make up for some time. Make up for some time. 
And the Lord said, not only will I heal you, but I will strengthen you. Weakness has been your problem. You feel like sometimes you can barely make it, but I'm going to heal you if you only believe. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, that must be for somebody somewhere. But if that's you, you ought to lift your hand. If that's you, you've been so weak. You feel like you can, sometimes feel like you can barely make it. I see a couple of hands going up. I don't know if they, is that you, honey? I see your hand. I see it. I see it. I see that lady's hand right there. Now come on, her teacher. He's a strength giver. Lift your hands. Lift them. Go ahead. Pull down what you need right now. Pull that, pull that strength down. Pull it down. Pull it down. Pull it down. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You go ahead. That's yours. That's yours. He sent his word for you. you lift your hand and say I'm going to take it tonight. Anybody got that problem? Anybody? Anybody? I see my hand on my brother. Is that you man? Your ankle's been swollen? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Your ankle's been swollen? I see another hand back there. Everybody's had swollen ankles. Come quick. Come quick. Come right quick. Come right quick. Come right quick. do this, I do this, even when Bishop Macklin was here, I, I do this, I just do this, you're gonna, you're gonna have to stretch across here, so that, my goodness, all these people with swollen ankles, come on, cause it was gone, yeah, step forward a little bit, so tighten it up, tighten it up, that guy, oh, that's good enough, hello, my goodness, now lift your hands right quick. Receive what God is doing. Because he wouldn't have called it out if he wasn't going to do it for you. He wouldn't have called it out if he wasn't going to do it for you. He wouldn't. I'm not shake of mine now. Move those ankles and see what God is doing for you. Where they've been swollen and bothering you. He come on Yeah, they're going down. 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 And he touched me. And he Huh? Say what? 
you, you give a mic to me. I can't hear what you're saying. I said my ankles were swollen. They were? Yes. What's wrong with them now? Huh? I can't hear you. what? They feel fine. They feel fine. They're not swollen now. Their feet look like they might come out that shoe, huh? And he touched you. And he made you. Oh. All right. We got one left, I guess. How you doing with them? You don't see it yet. All right, all right. We'll take your word for it. Hallelujah. Go away, go away, praise them. Thank you, Jesus. How many, this is the first time you've been in a service in a long time. Anybody in here been a long time since you've been in a service? You the only one? And that lady right there. Say what? It's been the first time in over a year. Somebody give God a praise for her. It's been a long time. How about you, honey? Huh? Been over a year? Close to a year. Close to over a year. Oh, over a year. Over a year. Amen. Tomorrow's going to be a great day. People are being ordained and licensed in, in the daytime and then... Tomorrow night, Dr. Donald Jones is going to be preaching, so we're going to have a great time. Father God, we ask you to bless these people even as they go. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Don't forget to stop by the bookstore.